You're coming to Madrid and you want to eat tapas where the locals eat tapas. I get it. Well, today we're taking you a few metro stops north out of the touristic center to a neighborhood that is just super local. And we're going to a tapas street that is famous, Calle Ponzano. There's a mix of traditional and modern tapas bars. Today I'm taking you to five of my favorites. We're going to eat, drink and make merry. Are you ready, Yoli? Yes. Benga, let's, let's go. go. Hey guys, I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Revealed. This channel is all about helping you explore Spain like a local. And today we're going super local. I love taking you guys out of the tourist center. I love showing you parts of Madrid that you might not discover on your own. And this street is just such a must visit. Look, the first bar we're gonna go to is super traditional. It's where you start your evening on Calle Pontano. It's called El Doble. It's famous, it's beautiful, it's delicious. Let's go and get a caña. Hey guys, so first stop, El Doble. This place has been open since 1987 and it's a classic. And I love starting the evening here. There's actually two El Dobles on the street. I'll make sure the address is down below in the description. This is the original one and that's the one we're at now. And this is a typical Madrid beer bar. So when you're starting your tapas crawl or before dinner, you'll come to one of these places, you'll order a, a caña, a glass of beer, or a vermouth, Yoli's on the vermouth, on tap of course, and you'll order it with some sort of seafood, often like boquerones in vinagre, which are anchovies that have been lightly marinated in vinegar. They'll generally also give you a plate of potato chips. You'll be thinking, potato chips? Why? I don't want potato chips, but this is a good sign in Madrid. It means you're in a classic place. And the other thing these guys do amazingly are these salads, which is tuna belly, tomato, onion, roasted red pepper. So simple, so simple, so delicious. One of my favorite salads in the world. So it's time to kick it off. We're starting with these, starting with the beer. Salud, welcome. Pompano, salud Yoli, good to have you along, <laughs> along for the ride. Mm. This place is famous for pouring its beer really well. You can order una caña or you can order un doble. Una doble is a bit of debate over it's un doble, una doble. It's una doble. Oh. Una doble. But you want to order a beer, vermouth, kick it off, love it. Okay, we're going to start with the boquerones en vinagre, one of my favorite tapas in the world. Yoli, get the camera in there. I want to show people what great boquerones en vinagre look like. Look at them. Served with a toothpick, that is key. Firm, they're firm and they're covered in garlic, covered in parsley. Wow, so good. I could live on these. It is just one of the simplest, most delicious tapas in the world. Little pro tip, now you'll notice that I have two plates of potato chips here. That's because the first plate was the free tapa that was served. The second one is when you order bocanones en vinagre in a traditional bar, you'll be given potato chips, because this is what you do. Fish and chips. <laughs> Mm. All right, the next dish that we ordered here, one of my most favorite salads in the world. It's such a typical Spanish salad. When it's done well, it's so delicious. It is simply onion, tomato, salt, tuna belly, roasted red peppers for sweetness, and that is it. Wow, I just love onion. Mm. Mm. Good. Oh my God. Vinegar on there. Mm. Oh, it's so good. So you've got this perfectly beautiful, flavorful tomato, yeah, this wonderful like tuna belly, sliced up onion which is not too strong but it's got some hit to it big chunks of salt in there and this sweet pepper that's roasted you see the char on the pepper there ah it's so good okay yoli i know you're hungry i know you've been working already you need to try some of this food give me the camera passing it over all right so mm, so fresh vinegary the texture i love also because it's um it's quite um hard you know it's like it's fresh, it's tight, it's like it's a tight fish, you know? It's, <laughs> oh. mm. No wonder it's your favorite salad in the world. It's good, huh? It's very beautiful. Huh. Never, for, never forget to... <laughs> never forget to dip your... <laughs> never forget to dip your bread, guys. What is there for? It is proper. Ciao. Bravo. Okay guys, and while we're running around having tapas, there's one place that you need to try, but it's closed right now until this evening, so I can't show it to you. Taberna Averias. This place is amazing for wine. They have an incredible wine selection. So if you're a wine lover, 
hit this place. All right, let's keep moving. Now we're gonna totally switch it up and go modern. Sala de Despierte. This place is gonna blow your mind a little bit. Let's go. So Sala de Despierte has a lot in common with El Doble as well because of the ingredients are so important here. You notice the menu is literally just a list of ingredients, like it was some sort of packing slip for a market, for a traditional food market. Just literally list the ingredient, list how it's cooked, list the weight, list where it's from. You know, 99% of things are from Spain and I love it. I'm excited, I'm excited about what's coming. Venga, let's go. Okay guys, we've got the first dish. It's very different from the last place. So what have you got in front of you? You've got a strip of pancetta and then on top of it is a little bit of sugar that's been caramelized slightly with the blow torches. Then there's egg yolk on there. There's there's a there's like a juice of, of sautern wine and there's foie as well. It's wrapped up and served in this, wow. Oh, it's good. It's like, it's small, but the flavors are so intense. And I love that, that really caramelized kind of flavor, that smoky flavor that comes from the panceta, but also comes from the, the blowtorch they got on top. Don't worry, this one's for you, baby. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Eating time. Delicious. It's like, you know, it's so rich and complex and like you know so many layers of flavor which i love so yeah delicious very very yummy so the next dish is called chuleton cenital and chuleton means t-bone and it's from madrid so there's really local ingredients and they've got tomato here and they've got a little bit of cracked pepper on it they've got salt and they've got this little mix here of of mushroom and olives and truffle mm. oh yeah just pure beef you know, not heavy. When beef is uncooked, it's so light, it's so delicious. You got the truffle there, the salt, the tomato. Ooh, yum. I did it, Yali. You didn't think it was possible? I achieved it. Yeah. This one's for you, baby. Mm. Oh, it's very nice, lovely. Very fresh. Yeah. You know, like eating raw meat, you would think, oh no, it's not gonna be the freshest thing in the world here, but it actually is. Right. <laughs> wow. So here's the thing guys, I'm really experienced in traditional bars. When I come to really modern places, I get really excited because I love the kind of combination of flavors, but I also get nervous because they're always telling me what they've just served me and I'm like, sorry, what was that? And it's like this list of things. I forget every single ingredient. The minute they've said like the third ingredient that's like from somewhere in Asia or something like that, my mind has gone blank and I get anxious and nervous. I'm like, but I gotta tell everyone who's watching what we're eating. So we have a combination of a variety of things, but the principally, this is beetroot. It's beetroot it looks like it's been so we've got beetroot uh we've got beetroot i mean a whole bunch of stuff going on here so time to try it mm. oh yeah roasted kind of meaty and chunky the beetroot and it's sitting on this beautiful kind of yogurty kefir sauce and then a wonderful kind of pecan -y flavor there as well certainly probably the healthiest thing we're going to eat today Muchas gracias. Wow. Whoa. Pesa. This is a heavy one. <laughs> this is not a light slither of uncooked beef. That is a big slab of marble there. Now what we do is we mix it up. We take it. I hope that's not hot. We put a little garlic chip, a little fried garlic chip on top of this lettuce leaf that we have here. And then we're going to create this little like taco as we call it. So you can see the onion there. You can see the beef beautifully kind of melted in all that fat. The soy there, you've got the carrot, you've got everything in there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Wow. Mm. It's really good. Wow. All those different flavors in there and the beef, it's all that fat that melted into it. And there's some kick in the back of my throat. And then there's the lightness of the lettuce and that garlic. You can taste that garlic chip. Down the hatch. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love the meat. It has taken on this flavor that it's like smoked and I get a, a bit of heat as well there. It's beautiful. It's yummy. Mm. Bueno, Simo, muchas gracias, ¿eh? Muchas gracias a ustedes. Muy rico y nos vemos pronto. Seguimos con la ruta. Muy bien. Chao, chao, chao. Gracias. Chao.
Okay, I hope you can hear me guys. It's pretty loud in here. This is a little similar to the first place we're at, but it's different. It's a different bar. It's called Fide. And there's a couple of them again in the street. This is the original and it's generally always heaving. This is the lunchtime crowd. There's a bunch of businessmen, mainly men here right now, having a few canas at lunch. And does this look familiar? Again, Spanish seafood bars, traditional seafood bars. But here we're ordering something different. I've ordered octopus a la gallega, pulpo a la gallega, and also tamborinas, which are like scallops, which they do. Bit of grilled delicious in their shell a little bit of lemon I love the respect for the ingredient in Spanish cuisine and so you see this beautiful scallop it's just been done on the grill sitting in its own juice and a little bit of olive oil meaty delicious wow. Oh my god, oh my god, wine blood, so tender, salty, fresh, juicy, meaty. I'm running out of adjectives here, Yoli. It's so good. You need to try this. Mm. Love, love so much, Samborinha, so beautiful. Okay, we also got the pulpo here, special treat. Look at this guy. Pulpo a la gallega, Galician style octopus. So you can see these beautiful tender slithers of octopus that are covered in, in beautiful smoked paprika. And then there's, there's hits of salt in there and you just grab it, a little bit of potato. Yeah. Tender, meaty, flavorful, mm. smoky, just the right amount of salt and paprika. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Chao. Hasta luego, chicos. Hasta luego. Chao. Encantado. Three down, two to go. We're over halfway, if that gives you any sense of hope and a sense of accomplishment. Can I have a glass of water in the next one? <sighs> no, because it's a craft beer bar. Let's go. <laughs> beer o'clock, literally. Okay, stop number four, El Sainete. Now I know there's a lot of beer lovers out there who I often get comments down in the comments of like, hey, why don't you try some craft beer? Well, your time has come, guys. El Sainete has 18 beers on tap. They're constantly changing the beers. So you might come, they literally print this beer menu daily. And so you'll come one day and they'll have, you know, whatever beers, the next day they'll have run out because they work with such small producers and it's a whole different mix. It's a combination of Spanish beers, they've got Madrid beers, they've got beers that are international. I love this place. Okay, what I've got here, you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? That's foamy stuff on the front. This is beer moot, which is a raspberry beer that has been mixed in with vermouth botanicals. And then it's got this kind of orange foam on top that has clove and has cinnamon. And it's delicious. I'm gonna take what it's like. It's like dessert, it's like dinner, it's like vermouth, it's like beer all in one go. Oh my God, really, really good. Yoli, you need to try this. No, you haven't yeah. tried it yet. You're gonna get in there. Mmm. I would say it's like um, dessert, yes, but also IPA. It's a perfumed IPA, I would say, right? <laughs> okay, brioche de solo mio, this dish. There's like brioche and there's steak tartare on top. There's little like pickles, some mustard. Let me get in here. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Fried brioche. And there's like a cumin spice in there as well. The bread is kind of fried. And there's the steak tartare. It's not bad, it's pretty good. It's not my favorite thing on, on, on Pontana. Let's try the bravas. Mm. I've never had bravas like this before. Like potato wedges, yummy big chunky potato wedges. And then they've got this like alioli. There's actually no brava sauce on here. It's like alioli, but it's done like a foam. I found the brava sauce down here. Found it. Where is it? It's underneath. The bottom there. I'm oh like, where was the brava sauce? Here we go. There. There's lots. Ooh, it's good. <laughs> uh oh, the bravas are coming back from behind. Let me, and they're hot. Wow, and the kick in the back. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm, uh... bravas are good. <laughs> and this is another Nomada, another beer from Madrid. I'm not a beer guru, so I'm reading here. Nomada. Passiflora sour. Ooh, that's really good. That's citrusy, it's light, it's delicious. Okay, so stop four done. El Sainete, yummy modern beer whole food, incredible beer. We need to keep going. We have stop number five come out. You ready, Yoli? Yeah, I guess so. We're doing it for you guys. Yeah. Let's go.
Okay, guys, stop number five. We're keeping it pretty light at this last stop, relatively speaking. This place, De Atun, is all about tuna, atun in Spanish. And there's a type of tuna which is fished in the south of Spain. It's called Almadraba tuna. And it's the way that tuna has been fished just off the coast of Cadiz in the south of Spain for about 3,000 years. And it's a whole labyrinth of nets so that as the tuna enter from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean to spawn in the warm waters of the Mediterranean, the big ones are caught, the little ones get through. So it's a more sustainable way of catching red tuna. Okay, we're gonna start with a tuna carpaccio. We've got like a wakame, which is an algae sand. We've got a teriyaki sauce, oil, olive oil. That's about it, getting in there. Mmm, ooh, beautiful tuna. There's like that sandy, seaweedy taste from the algae and then a teriyaki. So this one, we have a piece of tuna that's had the blowtorch on a little bit. It's got asparagus, and then there's an oloroso, which is a sherry, and soy dressing, and it looks like a little bit of alioli or something, and they said you had to put your... Oh, lovely. Mm. Ooh. Oh, wow. It's like great sashimi. Okay, so what do we got in here? Get in there, Yali. This looks beautiful. We've got raw tuna, it's little chunks of raw tuna, almadrava tuna, again, super rare. We've got kimchi seeds, we've got caviar, we've got ginger, pieces of ginger here. We've got a curry sauce, and I think this is a little bit of a wasabi sauce. Yeah, boom. Okay, that's good. Mmm, oh yeah. I mean, the fish is so good. It's, it's, it's delicate, it's light, but it's also, it's also meaty and flavorful. You know, as it say, and there's chunks of salt, it's got a salt head in there. Mm. Okay, I just realized I was eating that completely wrong. The idea is it's on a shiso leaf, and so you wrap the leaf around the tuna and all the sauces, and you eat it like that. So, bits of tuna. <laughs> wow. Well, four bits of tuna. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, Green, uh, grassy, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did it right the second time, yeah. Phew! Now this dish that has come out now is called a chimichurri taco. And then we've got these little chunks of tuna, more tuna, that's been soaked in a chimichurri and then a fry, what looks like a poached quail egg on top, with then some seaweed on top, a mustard sauce. <sighs> do you hear me breathing? People put in the comments, they're like, how does he do it? How does he not get fat? And it's like, I always say yoga and stress. Mmm, sorry, I'm being disgusting. Messy. Messy? Messy. This is really good. All right, Yoli, you go. Uh -huh. <coughs> mm. I think my favorite, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. It's very lovely. And now to wrap up, we have this confit of a tuna, this tuna confit on truffle. Oh, look at that quail egg that I'm doing over there, Yoli. Wow, that truffle and the tuna is just so light and it collapses in your mouth. Mm. Wow. Thank you, tuna. That is amazing. That was so good. Guys, if you're coming to Madrid, hit Calle Pontano. It's an amazing street. You'll be here with the locals. Traditional, modern, the whole gambit. There's so many more bars we didn't even visit, but great to see you guys again. Salud. Love you all. Love Spain. See you in the next video. Ciao. Bye.